Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. For today's tutorial, we're making cozy shorts. I've had this super soft fuzzy yarn for the absolute longest time, so what a better way to show it off than some lounge shorts, where the stitches and design are restrained so the yarn gets all the shine. Speaking of, if you got some yarn you don't know what to do with, then you're in the right place. We have hundreds of modern crochet tutorials and patterns for your pretty little hands with even more dropping twice weekly, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now, it's time to get on the show, so without further ado, for this project, any category 5 yarn will work, but I used a total of 215 grams of yarn. That's 230 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6.5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order, and enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us if you've ever worked with fuzzy yarn before. This was my first time I've ever done it, and I absolutely love it details for the giveaway down below. We're using three stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain, slip stitch, single crochet, and half double crochet. This tutorial is made for size small but you can adjust it for your size and we we'll explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting these shorts started, we're all going to grab our category 5 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6.5mm hook and start off by making a chain the height that we'd like for the waistband of the shorts to be. Now, I'd like for mine to be just about 2 inches or 5 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 8. Now that we have our chain, we're all going to block off that last chain and do a chain 1. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And what we're going to do from here is a slip stitch row. So start by inserting our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook. So we're going to bring our hook down, into that second chain, yarn over, and pull through both of those loops on our hook. So pull through everything on our hook, gently, to make sure that our falling row isn't too tight to work into. And we're going to continue on with our slip stitches into every chain. Now, I know that using the fuzzy yarn may be a little bit hard for everyone to see, so I will be inserting some clips using some yarn that's just a little bit easier for everyone to see. So just to do that first slip stitch again, block off that last chain, and do a chain one. Now that chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Then into that chain that we blocked off, and the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert. When we have those two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over and gently pull through both of those loops on our hook. Again, into that next chain, insert, yarn over, and gently pull through both. We're going to continue with one slip stitch into every chain, and we do want to make sure that we're not tugging too tightly after every stitch, otherwise the following row will be too tight to work into. Our row one is complete. Now let's get started on our row two. So we're all going to chain one and flip. That chain one doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. Now we're going to be doing back loop slip stitches. So finding that first stitch, we're all going to insert into that back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us, then yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Again, into that next stitch, insert into that back loop, yarn over, and pull through everything. And that's basically it. We're going to continue with one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain one, flip our work, and then repeat. So we're going to continue on with our back loop slip stitch row with no increases and no decreases until we have a waistband that can stretch, because remember it will have a decent amount of stretch to it, around the widest part of our hips. Now I will meet you back once we have an even number of rows that is in multiples of 6. We are back. I just completed the entirety of my waistband. I have a total of 84 rows and my length is roughly 20 inches or 71 centimeters. Now from here, we're going to seam our sides together, but it will still be difficult to show, so I'll be showing you guys with our baby sample. So 
So long story short, what we're going to do is we're going to fold our waistband in half and insert our hook into both the corner stitch of the front and the back panel. Then from here, we're going to yarn over and pull through everything on our hook and do a chain up of one to secure. Now we're going to do an outside loop slip stitch seam, which will look like another back loop slip stitch row. So start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert only into that front loop. Then find that next stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop. When we have these three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. Again, into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that front loop. Next stitch into the back panel, insert into that back loop, yarn over and gently pull through all three. And continue this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, and then I'll meet you back so we can single crochet along the top. So now that we have finished up our slip stitch seam, we're now going to single crochet across the top. All we're going to do is chain one, and then put one single crochet into every side row. So start by finding our first side row. This is Ryan right here, this raised row, so I'm going to find that top loop, and insert starting with one single crochet. This is my next side row, which is a divot right here, so I'm going to find that top loop, and insert with one single crochet. Let's do that again. This is my following side row, which is this raised row. Find that top loop, insert with one single crochet, and then this divot is my following side row. Insert with a second single crochet, and that's it. We're gonna continue with one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way around. Well, we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that chain space, and then do a chain up of one and cut. And just as a really quick tip, the amount of single crochets that we should have along the bottom of our piece should be the same amount of rows that we made for our waistband. And as one really quick tip, once when the single crochet row is completed, make sure you try your piece on because this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So if you try it on and if it's a little bit too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip, or if it's too loose, reduce some stitches with a tighter grip. Alrighty, so we are back. Our single crochet row along the edge of our waistband is complete. You guys cannot see it here, but it is there. Now what we're going to do from here before we get started on the length of our shorts is separating our pant legs from the left to the right. So what we're going to do is start by inserting our first two stitch markers into the stitches that we have that's on either side of our tail end because we did do a chain up of one and cut. Now from here, since we all should have ended on an even number of rows, therefore an even number of single crochets, we are then going to be inserting our stitch markers into the halfway point. Now for me, I have inserted my stitch marker into the first and into the 42nd stitch, and then did the same thing on the other side. We should have the same amount of stitches on both sides. And for everyone, we should all have two middle stitches, like how I have here, because we all should have ended on an even number. We're now going to get started on the length of our shorts. So we're all going to start by inserting our hook into our stitch marker stitch, insert it into one of them, it doesn't matter which one, and then start by making the chain the length that we'd like for our shorts to be. So you can make this as short or as long as you'd like. So when you're placing this up to yourself, make sure that you're placing the waistband where you want this to be. So high-waisted or low-rise, that is completely up to you. And then you can make the chain the length that we'd like for your shorts to be. I'd like for mine to be just about 9 inches or 23 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain 25. Now that we have our chain, we can get started on our row one, and it's just going to be a half double crochet row. So block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain, then what we're going to do from here is yarn over preparing for a half double. Into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through. When we have these three loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all three. And we're going to continue on with our half double crochets, making our way all the way down. Now this may be a little hard to see, so let's get this started with an easier to see yarn. All right, baby sample. What we're going to do from here, right after we have blocked off that last chain and did a chain two, we're all going to yarn over and into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a half double crochet. So into that chain, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, then yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. And that's it. Continue with one half double crochet into every chain and I'll meet you back at the base. Now connecting it into the base, what we're going to do is start by counting up the next two available stitches. So here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch into the base, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. Now that slip stitch does not count as a stitch, that's just to connect. 
Then we need to work our way up to the following row. So just slip stitch into that following stitch into the base, flip our work, and now we're going to be doing back loop half doubles, so a pretty simple detail. Yarn over into the first stitch from our previous row, making sure that we're not working into any of those slip stitches into the base. We're going to insert into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us, then half double crochet per usual. Again, yarn over into that next stitch's back loop, pull through, pull through all three, and continue with one back loop half double into every stitch. At the end of the row, chain two, flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch once more, and I'll meet you back at the base. All right, so we are back. Our rows one, two, and three are nearly complete. Now we're gonna connect it into the base. So just like how we did our previous row, we're all gonna start by counting up the next two available stitches into the base. So here's one, here's two. Into that second stitch, insert with a slip stitch to connect this row. Then to get started on our following row, slip stitch into that following stitch into the base. None of those slip stitches count as a stitch. Flip our work, and then put one back loop half double crochet into every stitch. Now we're just gonna continue to repeat our two previous rows with no increases and no decreases until we reach our following stitch marker stitch on this side. Once we do, do a chain up of one and cut, and then I will meet you back. So we are back. One side of our pant leg is all finished up. Now from here, what we're gonna do is the exact same thing that we did here on the other side. So just insert your hook into that following stitch marker stitch, and then repeat until we reach our next stitch marker stitch. Once we have both of our pant legs completed, I will meet you guys back. So we are back and both of our pant legs are completed. Now from here, we're gonna work on our inner thigh connector, which as you guys can see, I've already gotten one done on the side. So all this is gonna be, it's pretty simple. What we're gonna do is try on our piece, making sure that our waistband is where we want it to sit once when it's completed. And then we're gonna be inserting our stitch markers into the places that's right where we want the inner thigh connector to connect. So for those of you that want my numbers, I've inserted my stitch marker into the fourth stitch from the bottom and I made sure to do that on all four of my pieces, so front and back, and that's just about one inch or two centimeters from the bottom. Then all we're gonna do from here is more back loop half double crochets that connect one panel in between our thighs to the other panel. So what we're all gonna do is insert our hook into our stitch marker stitch, put one half double crochet into every stitch until we reach the end of the row, making sure that we're working down towards the bottom. Then from there, continue with back loop half double crochet rows until we have the inner thigh connector that we needed. So you can make this portion as long or as short as you need. Now I went ahead and already did mine. I needed a total of three rows and that's just about two and a half inches or six centimeters. Now we do wanna make sure that we're all ending on an odd number of rows so that once we meet back, when we seam it up, we're all gonna start at the bottom corner together. We are back. My inner thigh connector is complete. Now I have a total of three rows. Now what we're gonna do from here is seam it to the other panel that we have. So how that's gonna work is first off, make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out, meaning the seam that we have for the waistband is along the inside because that seam is gonna be along the outside once we wear it. And once we have that, we are going to insert our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel then all we're gonna do is the same exact outside loop slip stitch seam that we did for the waistband right here until we reach our stitch marker. Once we have that, do a chain of one cut, repeat on the other side, and then I'll meet you back. All right, so we are back. Now that we have both of our inner thigh connectors finished up for both of our pant legs, now one of the last things we're gonna have to do is just seam our pant legs together to form the entirety of the shorts. So this is gonna be fairly simple this is going to be a single crochet seam. So similar to the ones that we did for the inner thigh connectors. So what we're gonna do is make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the stitches into the waistband that both of the pant legs are coming out of. So if you still have your stitch markers into there, just into those stitches, or if not, just into those edge rows that we have. And then from here, all we're gonna do is just single crochet both of the panels together, making our way all the way around. So let's actually give you guys a better visual with the other colored yarn. Alrighty, so just to make sure that we all have this seam down, we are gonna be inserting our hook, like I said, into the two stitches that we have into the waistband that both of our pant legs are coming out of. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, 
pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Then all we're going to do is a single crochet row. So just find that first stitch into the front panel, insert your hook. First stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet everything together. So super simple. We're going to continue to do this single crochet seam until we reach our inner thigh connector because we're going to have to be working into some side rows. So I'll meet you back once we get there. So once when we have done our single crochet seam all the way down until we have reached our inner thigh connector, mine is already completed. I'm just going to talk you guys through it. What we're going to do is continue to pinch the two panels together, the front and the back panel, and then continue on with our single crochet seam. But we're going to be putting one single crochet into one side row and then two single crochet into the next and then continue that until we work our way around the inner thigh connector and then work our way back up the other side. So just as an example, we're at our middle thigh connector. Then we're going to be working into our side rows. So just find the top loop within the front panel, insert your hook. Find the top loop within the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. Next, find the next side row, insert your hook into that top loop within the front panel, into that next top loop within the back panel, with one single crochet, but since we are alternating between one to two, a second single crochet into the same top loops within the front and back panel, which should be a little bit easier since everything should already be gathered. There's my second single crochet, and that's it. Continue to alternate between one to two single crochets until we don't have any more side rows left to work into. Then finish up with our single crochet seam, and then I'll meet you back. So now that everything is all seamed up, the next thing we're going to do is our bottom band. Now, as you guys can see, maybe because it's fluffy yarn, I have already done the bottom band on one side, so we're going to do the other side together. We're all going to start with a single crochet row along the bottom of one of our pant legs. So making sure that our work is flipped right side out, right side up, we're going to insert our hook into any one of the side rows. Then all we're going to do is alternate between one to two single crochets into every side row, making our way all the way around. So let's get that started on a yarn that you guys can actually see. So what we're going to do once our hook is in through one of our side rows, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, and start with a chain one that's just as secure. Then start by finding our first side row, and this is mine right here. I'm going to find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Now skipping over to my next side row, this is my next side half double crochet row. We're going to insert in through there with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two. Let's do that again. My next side row, find that top loop and insert with one. My next top loop, insert with two. So there's one, there's two, and we're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way around, and then slip stitch into that chain space. And just as a really quick tip, this single crochet row is going to be as wide as this portion can stretch. So once we made our way all the way around and slip stitched into that chain space, try on your shorts just to make sure that everything is fitting nicely. If it's a little bit too tight, reduce some stitches with a looser grip or if it's too loose, reduce the stitches with a tighter grip. So now that our single crochet row is complete, we're all going to be doing a half double crochet row. So right after you've slip stitched into that chain space, we're all going to chain two, flip our work, and then put one half double crochet into every stitch, and then I'll meet you back at the end of the row. We've made our way all the way around with our half double crochet row. I have closed off the row, and now we're going to get started on the following row, but let me just show you guys how we're going to close it off with an easier to see yarn. Now that we've made our way all the way around with our half double crochet row, we're now going to close it off. So what we're going to do is count up the two chains that we made when we got started on this row. So here's one, here's two. Into that second chain, we're going to insert with a slip stitch to close off row two. Now everyone's row three is going to be a front and back post double crochet row to get some ribbing. So all we're going to do is chain two. Then we're going to yarn over. Working in the same direction as our previous row, we're going to find that first half double crochet from our previous row. Then we're going to bring our hook down underneath the body of that stitch, so underneath, and bring your hook through the other side. Then yarn over, pull through, then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That is our front post double crochet. Next, let's do a back post double crochet. So yarn over again. Bring your hook down underneath our work, then we're going to bring our hook in through that next gap over the body of that following half double crochet and through the other side. Then yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. 
and that is a back post double crochet. Let's do that again. Yarn over, preparing for a front post double. Bring your hook down into that next gap underneath the body of that next half double crochet and through the other side. Then yarn over, pull through, yarn over, there we go, pull through two, pull through two. And to do a back post double crochet, yarn over. Bring your hook down underneath our work, in through that next gap, over the body of that next half double crochet and through the other side. Then yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that's it. We're going to continue to do our front post and back post double crochets, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left to work into, slip stitch into that second chain that we made and do a chain up of one and cut. Alright, so we are back. We have finished up the bottom band for both of our pant legs and we are actually all done with that. Now let's get started on the drawstring. So what we're all going to first want to do is make a chain the length that we need for our drawstring to be. Now I ended up making a chain of 110, that's 51 inches or 130 centimeters. Now what we're going to do from here is find where the middle of our shorts are and then we're just going to weave it in through the same stitch making our way all the way around. So all I'm going to do is find the middle like I said, so I'm going to trace my seam all the way up to my waistband, find the row that's right next to it, and then weave in my chain with my tapestry needle. So I'm just going to pull all the way through, but leaving a little bit of slack. Once we have that, I'm just going to continue to choose the same stitch because we don't want it to be a little zigzagged, but I'm just going to choose the same stitch, making my way all the way around. We are back. We have pulled our drawstring all the way through and we are all done. Last thing we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, y'all. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Join us on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch you on the next one. Bye.